Now, this project is a bit of an abomination at this point, but I want to export it. And so before I show you how to use all the other tools, I'll just show you how the export process works because it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is hit Command E to export, and then it brings up this modal where you can name it uh, as whatever file you want. You can choose where it's the normal system picker for where you want to save the file. And then there's different types. So you can do automatic, which is fastest, normal, or slowest. And basically the higher you go, the more high quality the video will be, uh, how high quality the render will be. You can set a resolution uh, anywhere from the original down to 25% to these common sizes, or you can do a totally custom one where you enter exactly the numbers you'd like, or I could enter something like 86% and it sizes it correctly. I can letterbox content, so if it's not a uh, not doesn't fit these dimensions, it'll letterbox it. Uh, I can use motion blur as well. So this is actually kind of nice. It's very intensive, so your export's gonna take two times longer or maybe even more than that than normal. But if you use motion blur, it'll actually make like the mouse cursor and all your screen flow stuff, uh, your screen recording stuff, I should say, will have this kind of nice extra smoothness applied to it, uh, which is pretty fun. You can do light, medium, or heavy. I find anything higher than light to be a little distracting. I'll try to show a an example of the difference here. But basically, uh, you can do this on or off if you want. I think it makes the videos look a little nicer, screen recordings especially, but it's not good for anything where you're on camera using a real real video. Don't use this. Uh, but if you're just doing a screen recording, it can make it nicer. But again, it's going to take a lot longer to export, so keep that in mind. Uh, there's chapter markers that you can put in here during certain videos, uh, captions as well. So depending on if you're using those features, which again, we'll get into later, uh, you can choose to have those here. This project doesn't have any of this, so it doesn't even offer them to me. Gives me the estimated file size down here of 24 megabytes, but the real power comes in the manual settings. So there's a couple presets that I have. I have an animated GIF, uh, which will export it as a GIF. Now this is a 30 second video that's not going to be a reasonable to distribute as a GIF, but if you have like a five second, 10 second thing, a GIF might be a great way to communicate it. Uh, but I also have one for video tutorial and for 24 FPS video. And you can see these things change uh, for all of them. Now, what are the differences here? If I wanna customize basically whatever is going on here, I can say customize, and then I have all these options for video and audio. I can set the frame rate. Uh, I have it set to 24 for this file type, but again, you can set different ones. And I could even set like 120, or I could set uh, 60, whatever I want it to be. This format just does 24. I can do the data rate, which in this case, uh, this sort of video is going to be uh, typically where I'm on camera. So I want a much higher bit rate than a screen recording. For a screen recording, you're probably good with 6,000 kilobits a second. I can do profile. Honestly, I'm not a huge, uh, <laughs> hugely into this, uh, but basically just leave it as main, he'll be fine. And then codec, uh, any of these work. I think uh, the Multipass X264 uh, is the highest quality. I like the hardware accelerated Apple 264 one because it's more efficient, is much faster. And for me, the quality looks basically exactly the same. So that's what I always use. Keyframes are something that video compression uses to uh, kind of refresh uh, when you have an un not uncompressed frame, but it, it affects the quality. Leave this as automatic. Uh, you can change it if you have lower quality video than you'd like. You can hit it and then make it every like 15 frames or something. Um, but in general, you want to just leave this automatic. And then audio, don't even touch this, I would say. <laughs> Trust it. Uh, maybe switch mono or stereo based on your needs, uh, but you can just save your settings when you're done. If you want to save presets, you can go to this manage page. And there's a whole bunch of system presets that the app ships with. And most of these are actually checked when you first launch the app. So you're going to have all those by default. Uh, animated GIF is the only default that I actually keep around. Uh, but they also have this ability to do custom presets. And so how that works is basically you take one of these. So if I take web high as one of my presets, I can copy it. It throws it down here under custom. And I'm just going to leave the name as that. And then I can edit and I see that same screen, right? And so for my web high, maybe I want it to be 60 FPS. I want it to be 6,000 kilobits a second. I'm going to go to that hardware accelerated Apple H264 and leave everything else the same. And so now that is more in line with what I want. And since it's checked there, it shows up in my preset list and I can do that and it sets everything correctly. And then the resolution that you export is always independent from the format, the preset format that you have. So those are two separate things. So you can do this like um, I'll do my 24 FPS video and then I can choose to export at full resolution, 75, 50, 25, or any of these custom ones that I want, right? So all of those are available.
Then once you go, uh, you just hit export and it's going to export here. So this is a 30 second video, 31 seconds ish. Uh, and then you can see based on those settings I did, uh, it's going to take less than a minute to export. You can see it export in real time for context. This is a 2015 MacBook pro. Uh, it's a pretty specked out one with an i7 and all the features, bells and whistles. But at the time of recording, it is a six year old machine. So not state of the art, but you can kind of get an idea for how long things take to render. Uh, actually, if I cancel this, you saw it was almost done there. And I go into export again and I do motion blur. Uh, let's just see how long it's estimating that will take. So that's estimating about a minute. So it looks like it's gonna take more time, but not terrible. So this looks like about 2X what it was previously, but yeah, a longer export. And again, the longer your files, uh, your longer your projects are, the more time it's going to take to export. Obviously the difference is gonna be more substantial. So, uh, you know, use those on a per case basis.